John Capobianco. I'm a senior IT integrator and planner for the Canadian House of Commons, the Parliament of Canada. Uh, I've been here since 2013 and I joined as part of a, a long-term program to completely renovate and revolutionize the digital and network services at the House of Commons. Uh, more recently, I've, uh, you know, we, we built up that network and replaced the network for the Parliament, but the uh, ongoing configuration management and state validation and testing, we've been moving towards a fully automated approach over the past, say, three years. Um, I had written a series of blogs. Dana reached out to me uh, from Blue Cat, geez, a couple years ago now, um, she had seen a copy of my book and wanted to uh, see if I was hoping to, you know, write a blog post uh, summarizing my, this digital journey I've been on for the past few years with a slant on automation for Blue Cat. And that was very, that went very well. And I've gotten to know Dana a little bit since then. And um, we just did a round cable discussion about um, the, the promised land of automation and are we there yet and how do we get there and four or five of us uh, from the industry reflected on network automation and uh, its current state. Um, I'm also in the process of writing a follow up book to my first book with a focus on APIs. So the book's going to be called Automate Your Network APIs for Infrastructure. So I reached out to Dana because I, I knew that Blue Cat had some rich APIs and I thought it would be a good field example for my book, um, as well as to get myself, get my hands on a Blue Cat and start playing with the tools myself. Um, and uh, Scott, who was just on, and myself, in a very short amount of time, um, Scott gave me some documentation, he gave me a working string, and, and um, basically in about half an hour, uh, I managed to fully automate a particular function um, in Ansible with the Blue Cat address manager, BAM. So I'd like to go over the iterative process where we started. We, st we didn't jump right to the Ansible automation. Um, we started with Postman and I started with basically learning the fundamentals of the, the BAM APIs and, um, and we basically took it from there. Awesome, it sounds like you had a, a pretty good experience and I, I do remember those blogs, I think it was last year or sometime. Those were, I, I thought those were excellent. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I had a, you know, like I said, what I liked is the agility. So, you know, here's a couple, a little bit of documentation, a username and a password, and I was off to the races. Um, the, once we had it working in Postman, it's very easy to transform that into an Ansible playbook mm -hmm. and, um, and automate at scale. Now, um, this is a very simple demo of an HTTP GET. So we're doing a, a RESTful method, a get to retrieve data. But why I like to start with this approach with an HTTP get, uh, there's a couple of things. One, we get very valuable data back. And two, we can create reports from that data automatically without ever logging into uh, a GUI. Now I like the BAM, I like the GUI and the interface and everything, but I don't want to be clicking and fumbling around menus on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Mm -hmm. Can't I just run a one-line playbook or a GET and get that data back into reports? Um, so that that's the approach, but it's safe. Like if you look up a, an HTTP GET by the book, it's, it's known as a safe uh, thing to do. It, it doesn't create anything, it doesn't delete anything or update anything. I, I have no possibility of damaging my environment. But I get some muscle memory and start using the API. Mm -hmm. So in Postman, and it might be hard to see on my screen, and don't worry about my username and password or anything, <laughs> I, we have this collection set up where, so BAM uses what's called OAuth, which is an authentication, an open authentication which is to me is good because it's stronger than just a username and password. You have to use a username and password first to authenticate with a get. You can see that this is a get in Postman. And I pass my username and password in a string, which I can variableize and hide. I, you know, that's, that's easily done. And I get back a token, a BAM auth token, which I then have to pass. So let me, let me just quickly send this and get a new token. So now I have my token and in my next, so I have a, a postman collection. So it's easy for me to go to my next collection and I go to my header and I replace the key with my new token. And then I do another HTTP get. Now the get I'm using here is search by object types. And I could pick any object type for any object in BAM, but I've picked IPv4 networks and a keyword of star, give me all the network objects. 
So you can see I get nice JSON back from the API that indicates the identifier, the name, so I have sample and sample2, the type, which is an IPv4 network, and then the properties which have all of the details like the cedar space and um, different in pieces of information. So this is great and I can just run this and, and um, in Postman on demand and, and I'll automatically get this information. I could also use Postman and change this to a post and create a record with similar fields. Uh, I didn't get to that in my discovery. I was really focused on taking this and making it now work in an Ansible playbook. So I'll show you the code. Um, now, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this. I have a, I'm going to have to make a file in here because it's an empty folder. Um, I didn't want to cheat. So you'll see that my documentation folder is now empty. It just has a git ignore file. And then I have these playbooks, the git bam networks.yaml file. So Ansible uses YAML. And um, how I've chosen to handle this for simplicity is to prompt for a username and password. And that's my BAM username and my BAM password. Now in the BAM, I have to have API read permissions. Other than that, that's all I need. My first step is to get that token. So I pass the username and password that I've prompted for to the RESTful API. And you can see I'm doing a get. And how I handle it is I register the response as raw token. I then have to parse that token with a regex to strip out everything except for the actual token. And I register that as token. And then you can see in my next step here, I'm doing my actual search by object type API call. And I'm passing the authorization. I'm passing the token that I parsed here. Um, so I can stop there. Do you have any questions or any, any comments, anything about the approach so far? Um, if not, I can keep going. I so. Okay, so nope. I just so, wanna so highlight that um, if, if you wanna, so this is human driven automation where someone needs to run the playbook and respond to the prompts. I don't want anyone to think that that's a limitation. I could use an Ansible vault mechanism and vault a, a, the, the password and then not prompt at all, just run the playbook and it'll pass an unlocked and encrypted variable at runtime if you did if you wanted to put this in a docker container or something that's that's non human or you know drive it through tower or Azure DevOps or something so now that I have my data back, you can see that I'm registering network, which is all the results from that keyword search i I then take that and create a few reports so what I usually do, my first step is to just take those raw facts and put them into a file called raw.json. Now this is good for forensics or uh, machine, other machine downstreams that might need the raw JSON, but it's not very human readable or usable. Ansible has filters. You can see that I have the variable network here, but then in this variable network, I have a pipe, which is a filter, and I run it through the two nice JSON filter and I create another JSON file called facts nice versus facts raw. Now that'll make it human readable JSON. I go another step further and run it through the two nice YAML filter and create a YAML file from the results, which is even more human readable and um, nice for data modeling. I do a little bit of um, manipulation to add a header row and um, and I'm going to stop there. So I create three files, a raw JSON file, a nice JSON file, and a YAML file, which are good, but they're not exactly, um, like they're not reports that I could send to management or operations or monitoring or whatever, um, or project managers. I, I want a human readable file, like a spreadsheet, right? So what I do next is I set the facts, my JSON list, from the network JSON variable, which you'll see, I'll highlight this in the raw report, but I'm getting the JSON data back and I'm setting a fact JSON list. And what I do is I just create a CSV file from that list and the rest of this is just regex cleanup. I'm not gonna go over all of it, but I, I basically go over the, the data and massage it in a way that it'll make a nice CSV file. 
this step, I add the header row, and you can see all the different fields I'm going to have in my CSV file. And then I do the same thing to create a markdown file. So it's, it's basically the exact same format, but instead of being separated by commas, they're going to be separated by pipes. So I do my cleanup and I make it nice and pretty. And then I create my header rows in my markdown file. And the very last step is a new-ish new tool that I like to use called markmap. And it will turn any valid markdown file, so a .md file, and it'll turn it into an interactive HTML mind map file, which you'll see in a second. So that's the playbook. I don't have any host files because I'm going against an IP address and, or a host name in my URLs. And I don't have any group variables or anything else. Everything is self-contained in the playbook. Now, um, what I I'm going to have to just commit this git ignore file in, git ignore. What I thought was neat was that Scott, who was on the call earlier, I was able to push this up to GitHub, give him some simple instructions, install Ansible in Ubuntu, and git clone the repo, and make the IP address your BAM, and does it work? And Scott replied like a couple minutes later saying, yeah, it works great, I have these files, it's awesome. So it's so portable and so easy, and I was so like, it was, it was rewarding to me to develop this file remotely and then have a Blue Cat engineer run it and, and say, yeah, it worked great. So I'm, I'm in my Ansible environment here. I just have to pull that git ignore file down and I'm gonna clear my screen. And uh, so now I run Ansible playbook git bam networks, enter. And again, it's gonna prompt me and I'll put in my credentials here, but this could be fully non-interactive where we're using vaulting mechanisms to, uh, to provide the credentials, that's not a problem. And I authenticate and I hopefully I got my password right. Now the playbook does take a little while. Ansible's not known for its speed necessarily, but uh, we'll just let this run and we can talk about it while it runs in the background. Um, and it's mainly taking a long time because there's a lot of parsing and manipulating of data to create nice pretty human readable reports. Um, the, the playbook is available on my uh, GitHub, and I believe Dana's going to get it onto Blue Cat's new GitHub repository as well. And um, everything is commented. It's easy to read. It's easy to follow. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. Um, and we're just going to let this run. What's the link to your GitHub and your uh, blog, by the way, John? Yeah, great. Um, so my GitHub is GitHub slash automate your network, all one word. And I've just launched a new blog web page, landing page for all this automation stuff that I do on automateyournetwork.ca. Um, that page is just a few days old. So if you want to check it out, I've already got some content up on there, uh, including the uh, roundtable discussion that, that Dana facilitated, and as well as the link to my Blue Cat four-part blog series that I had mentioned, which you can find easily on Blue Cat as well. But uh, they're all there on my uh, automateyournetwork.ca. Awesome. And Chris, maybe a few words on uh, the Blue Cat GitHub. Yeah, we have a new network VIP. Join the Slack channel for the Slack group for uh, folks like John to contribute things like this. And this is this is the sort of content that we're trying to drive is community driven things that users actually want to use, as opposed to having us just dump a bunch of stuff there and you know maybe not get used or anything like that. That's really what we're trying to do is drive a community around our automation integration efforts as opposed to just trying to go it alone. And it's called Blue Cat Labs is the, the, the broader repo, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Blue Cat Labs, I believe you can get to it on our website. Um, you should be able to just search Blue Cat Labs on GitHub. <clears throat> There's also a bunch of different things that we've contributed, not just for Network VIP, but we also have a host of different gateway workflows. We have a bunch of other different tools that have been contributed from internal sources and external sources alike. That's great. So the, uh, the playbook finished up here, and I'll just highlight here at the bottom, uh, you can see it's adding the header rows and it generated the mind map. And we have, um, it was okay for 58 steps and it made 50 changes in those 58 steps. And what it results in are these files. And if I, I'll quickly show you that I'm not cheating here, if I can get back to my screen. In my documentation folder, right, there's, it's just empty, there's a git ignore file. And you can see I have files waiting to pull them down. So I pull them down. And now let's take a look at the files that we get. 
I can get rid of the git. Oh, don't worry about that. So let's, this is the first, the raw JSON that I was talking about. So it's not very human consumable. It's all one line, one big string. And that's not great. But it is the raw data and it's a nice forensic thing to have in case another machine needs raw JSON or say your audit or security or compliance wants, you know, something that's unmanipulated right from the API. Now the next file is the nice JSON. And as you can see, it puts it into a much more human readable format and we can see lots of good information. So uh, the content is one big string there, but we can see that it's application JSON was the type that we got back. Um, it didn't fail, so failed false. I got an okay message back or a 200 status back from the API. It gives me my server name. I wasn't redirected. Here's the URL that was used. And there was a couple warnings, but don't worry about the warnings. This is the important information right here is the .json. So I have that same information you saw in Postman right here, but I have it in my own files in my own repository now. So this is great, but can we go a step further? Actually, I'm missing a file. The YAML file looks like this. So if you don't like JSON, the curly braces and commas and all that stuff, we can make it even more human consumable in the YAML format, which is what this looks like. So now let's look at our CSV file. And you can see there's two records there. And uh, I'm going to make this look like CSV. So this is an extension of Excel preview in VS Code. Or if you want, I can even go a step further and we can look at it right in Excel because this is how people are going to consume this stuff, right? So here's the DNS report. You could run this every four hours, every night, every time you add a record, however, whatever your automation workflow is. And now I have in a CSV stateful data in, you know, there's the cedar blocks. I, I have two cedar blocks, um, you know, ping before a sign. They're both disabled. Ping before a sign has been inherited. These are the gateways. Um, you know, they inherit the DNS. Now, you know, I only have two records, but over time, I'm going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of records, and I don't want to go through the GUI to get all this data per record, right? One time playbook, run it, you have the data. The other thing is uh, I have the markdown file, which is just another file format that I like, um, and this is what it looks like in markdown. Now, why I like markdown is in my upstream repository. I'll just show you very quick. Uh, no, hang on, I gotta go to GitHub. I just wanna show you how this, uh, so here's the GitHub repo. <laughs> and under repositories, there should be a blue cat address manager, network facts, documentation. And if we look at the markdown, it renders nicely in a browser like this. Mm -hmm. So it's like HTML light. Now, the really cool file is the mind map file. So in VS Code, it will give me the raw HTML. But if I right click and say open in default browser, I get this mind map file, which is fully collapsible um, and interactive and I can zoom and click around. So it's kind of like the CSV where I have all of my records broken out as a leaf. And then each individual record has the matching um, variables and file types. Now this again will scale if I had a thousand records I would have a thousand little leaf nodes like this. Um, this is just a, it's just a fun little file. I have the markdown. I may as well make the mind map. My Gen Z staff love these mind maps. Um, I'm not necessarily too hot on them, but um, the younger generation coming up, they, they, for some reason, they really like that mind map format. Um, so that's the show and tell. Um, now in, you know, in the BAM, if I delete a record and rerun this playbook, um, I will have all that data um, if, in my Git history. If I if I go back, whoops, uh, sorry, back to back to Azure DevOps Git. Um, I don't know how much history is in here, um, but you have the full history if if say uh, you added a record or deleted a record um, in your Git commit file records, uh, you would be able to see the history of these files. So I could compare this file to yesterday's file and maybe I have two new networks or one less network or whatever. So it's, it's all fully automated. So that's, that's my song and dance. And um, 
I, I, like I said, it was very agile. It was very easy to use. I did have to do some regexing there. And I, you know, Scott is aware of my feedback for the API developers, but more or less, we, we got it working in Postman, made an Ansible playbook out of it. And now the BAM function is automated. And um, this is just a launching board onto even more automation, even more playbooks that I would write against the BAM. So one thing I'll note about our docs, which is, I don't know if you've been informed or seen social media or whatever, we, ju we just or in the process of opening up our documentation to the world. So before you may have been given like a PDF file or, you know, had to give them special access into the BlueCat systems for what we call our care community. You won't have to do that anymore. You can go to BlueCat or docs.bluecatnetworks.com, I believe, and you can open up the documentation. Oh, like, that's right great. Now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I find, um, I think that's great because this new um, open approach, even even companies with, you know, very, very expensive intellectual property and, and private information that they maybe want to have a customer already on board. The fact that you're making that public is, is, is a really great trend because, because you can start developing solutions with Postman and Ansible and things like that um, right away. So I, I think that's great.